Hi, welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC test bench. Today this is a follow-up video I've talked about in the last one where I was testing uh, PLC5 COM ports about using RS links and RS232. Now, some of the younger people may think that RS232 is a thing of the past and is not used. It's used on control logics, it's used on PLC5, it's used on Slick 500, and it's used on multiple modules that Alan Bradley and others put out. There are entire companies now that put out USB to serial converters that work properly with all automation equipment. Now specifically we're talking about Alan Bradley here because that's what I do. So what I'm going to do is get set up. I'll swing the camera over and we'll uh, show you the screen. We'll show you the adapter that I'm using that uh, I recommend to most of my customers and uh, we'll uh, go step through uh, three different uh, products which is Control Logix, Slick 500 and PLC5 and how to connect to them using RS links and a USB to 232 converter. So back in a half a minute. Okay we're back. So this is my USB to serial converter. It goes from my, in this particular case, in the front front port of my uh, workbench computer, to the swing way up there. There's the front port of my PLC5. Now it has the cable that goes from the USB to serial converter to the front is a null modem cable and it has a crossed connection in it rather than a straight through. This is the way they were designed um, and Rockwell Allen Bradley designed, picked that years ago. So it is loaded in and if we go to the computer and we go to the control panel this is the Windows 7 system. Go to Hardware and Sound, Device Manager, and down here to Ports, COM, and LPT, which you can see right there. Uh, it says Aiton USB to Serial Bridge, and it is COM 15, is, is what the computer is picked. Now, depending on your desktop or laptop, that you're using with your software and everything else set up, um, your number will be different, and that's. But you need to know what uh, COM port it is for using RS links. So we close all this. We go back to RS links, and we'll just maximize it, and we'll go to communications. Configure drivers and so I'm going to start. I'm going to delete it to begin with. And so we start, we've opened up our configuration configure drivers box. Just kind of zoom in a bit more just so you can see. Now at the top, we pick. RS-232 DF1 devices. Add new, which you can see here on the right hand side. It comes up with this particular box here. It says add new driver. So this box, it defaults to the name ABDF1. But if you, depending on what you're doing, you may want to call it something different. In this case, I'll call it ATEN USB. Um, there's a maximum 15 characters you can put in that line. So, open it. Now, our COM port right here, you, like we said, when we saw it there, it's COM 15, 1, 5. We are It defaults to going to PLC channel 0, which in this case is our PLC 5. And we're going to the serial port, which is channel 0. And we're going to station number here. Let's bring this down a little bit. This is the station number you're saying that your computer is. And 
serial connections only show one at a time. So just because we'll call it 12. Just and then you hit here in the left corner auto configure. Now if your USB is loaded, your cable is correct, you're plugged in, hit auto configure and it's successful. So we'll say OK and we'll close this box here. We will go back into our RS Who and you can see it says right there Aiton USB Data Highway. Open it up. There's our 580 and our workstation is number 12. So let's go online to the PLC5. I have the software open and in on the left hand side is our channel configuration box. So we'll just open that up a little bit. So we go into channel configuration and we go over here and we look at just back up just a bit. There we go. And here's our channel configuration screen screen. So channel zero is our RS232. Now it's currently set at 19.2. That's what I set it to. Default speed out of the box, no battery, no memory loaded, nothing into the program is 2400. And that's, like I say, the default setting. This is from back in the day when these things first came out and 2400 was actually a fairly fast speed. So, we want to change this back to 2400 just so we can show how it's done. Down in the bottom here, we hit apply and it says it's going to it's running and it's got to be thrown and in, put into program mode never do this while your mill is running or your process is running you need an offline situation to be able to do it because you're going to shut down everything so we in this case we say yes it goes through and now it says change back to run mode yes okay now if we minimize this and go back to RS links. So we look at this and we got to now have a big red X through our PLC 580 data highway. That is because, and we'll close this box, go into communication, configure drivers. Uh, to do any, you don't have to always do to stop it but it is a good idea. So we hit stop Whoop. on our USB. Stop. Now we go into configuration and now again we hit auto configure and it will go through and it now sees it at 2400 baud because that's what it's set. So, if you are unsure, if you can't see it on your RS Who, do an auto configure to see if it finds it. Um, that's the fastest way. So we say OK, and we'll just turn that back on because I turned it off when I shouldn't have. Go back into our RS Who, and we come up here. We look at our 8 and USB, and there we are again. So that's how you change back and forth for serial ports on a PLC5. Now, for those of you that are too young to remember of everything that's going on in life, serial is a standard that has been around since the... 60s or 70s, I believe. And if we go over here to our Slick 500. Now, the Slick 500, this is a 505 Ethernet processor. There's the Ethernet port. 
there's our RS-232 port and you need to have a straight in connector to be able to get it. Again, you, you can tighten these down if you're going to leave it in there. So let's go back to our communications, configure drivers, and you stop it. Always just best practice to stop it first. Configure. And now we go over to this box here. We pick slick, channel zero, micro, or panel view. It, all three of them use the same exact driver. Hit auto configure. Verifying, and it's successful. So the speed on this is 19.2. That is the out-of-the-box speed for the Slick 500. So we'll say OK. We're up and running. Go back to our Eaton USB. There's our Slick 505, Slick 552. So some of you may ask, what does this have to do with the current series of processors, which is control logics. So let's have a look. Just unplug this, and you'll see in a second here that'll go to red. And we'll just go over here to the right hand side, and I have a Logix L62 processor that I use on my test bench. And the L62 has an RS-232 COM port at the front end, just like that. So we go back to here, we close our RS who, we open our configure drivers, we stop it, we go into configure, COM15 as always. You go down to the bottom here and it says Logix 5550 Compact Logic. That's what they named it originally because the 5550 was the first one that came out. So now we hit Auto Configure and it's successful. And again, 192 is the standard speed for an out of the box unit. So there we go, RS-232, we just say OK, close, reopen our uh, USB here, and there's our L62, which was last used for testing analog cards by the name on it. So there we go, It's uh, there's how you use and configure a RS-232 USB cable so that if you don't have anything else available you can at least get it onto the front port of the processor that you want. Next one I'm going to do is on data highway ports the, R the communication ports in the PLC5 how to configure all of them what uh, sort of options you got and that'll be a lot shorter video than this one. Thank you. Come back anytime and subscribe if you'd like. Have a great day.